few minutes late to get started, but that's okay. I was busy mixing stuff up. Because I was just in the garden just a little while ago. Because I really haven't been out there very much other than to pick some stuff. But the problem is, hold on, let me readjust this a little bit. The problem with having procedures is you get laid up and you really can't do much. And my garden has seriously, seriously been neglected. Seriously neglected, okay? There's a lot of damage from um, the cabbage loopworms. There's a lot of damage from beetles. There's just, there's a lot of damage. So today I'm gonna hit it up after the sun goes down behind these trees over this way. Getting ready to mix all this up. I'm letting everything dissolve. And here I have a combination of what I know works for me and that is bacon soda. Kills those loopers. And I'm also going to be adding in some BT, caterpillar killer. I've got my oil, got my soap in there, got my Dawn dish liquid, of course, because the cheaper brands just don't seem to work as well. But yeah, I've got my lemon oil which I made myself. It's got lemon balm, it's got mint. So I wanna do several things at once. I wanna do deterrent. I want to starve them and, cause that's my food. Now, right after the procedure, I went out to the garden and I trimmed all the Brussels sprout leaves off. I'm starting to think I should have left those on a little bit longer because they seem to have laid more eggs that I missed when I did spray. And that was a week ago. And now there are like, I don't know, too many to count of little worms eating all around the whole top section of my Brussels sprouts. Not the Brussels themselves, but the tops. So we're going to deal with that today. So, now. We're going to load that in here. Yep, they are getting sprayed. So, I'm gonna go ahead and just, I've already got my water loaded in, got one gallon. This will take care of all of them. I'll probably end up having to go through and make another batch for the, my rose bush. I have a rose bush up front that I will take y'all to go see. It had been getting torn up by them stupid June bugs. And I want to show y'all my super large, uh, what I call the extra large, rose hips. I love these things. I, I take them, I pick them. I like to dehydrate them, save them for tea. I'll eat them while they're fresh, but I always take the seeds out because there's little hooks on the seeds. And you don't want to get stuck in your GI tract. And then I'm going to show y'all something else. Let me pour this in here because all this has to mix well. Because in between sprays. I'm gonna have to whoop, get some more water. In between sprays, I gotta shake this thing up. Oh yeah. Tell you what, I like to try to use as much natural stuff as possible. I hate pesticides, but uh, but yeah. Let me get this top put on because I want to make the sure this thing is sealed really good. Come on, you stupid thing. Everything I do around here is like manual because I want to make sure if I ever have a grid down, I can still do everything I need to do. Which is why I still want to do a well pump that's by hand. We have a 60, I think a 65 foot deep well with a good water level. So the one I really wanted, which was that really cute red one, you know, for designer issues. But you know me, I like red. But, oh shoot, I forgot to add the BT. But, um, but yeah, I want to I wanna get a manual hand pump for the well system. Because I really don't always want to have to use a generator. Right. So, so BT. Tell you one thing, between BT, that soap, and 
then the oils to make it stick really good. I'm not even doing neem oil this time because I'm just gonna hit every single creature that's living in that garden without hurting my plants. That's why I gotta wait till nighttime. But yeah. All right. Give it a shake. Shake it around. Yeah, no, I'm a weirdo. Don't care, but at least I'm in a good mood today. All right, let's let that sit for a couple of hours out here in the shade. Definitely not leaving it out in the sunlight. This thing's already going to fit. Yeah, let's give it a good skirt. Kill what's ever laying, hanging around this area. Get some pressure off. So I see there's one person on here at this moment. Hello. Now, let me show you my new babies. Because I literally just brought them outside. So we're out here in the shade. My first new baby, as in the thumbnail. Yes, it is what it says. It is a large leaf tea plant. Look at that. I got my first baby. And something lead was on the hunt for. See, he got the big one. I didn't. I'm starting fresh. Miracle berry. Honestly, I got that out of sheer curiosity. I want to see if I can grow it. Yep, just a little seedling. But it looks good. It looks healthy. Oh, shoot. Making a mess. Did I seriously just get that on my towel? I did. Pardon the shaking. But, yeah, I've got my pot ready. I just got to put some soil in it and get everything set up and ready to rock and roll. And, and I got water, dirty water from the plant bag. Oh well, not a biggie. Alright, so we've got our mix together. I've showed y'all the cute little plants, the new ones I'm going to be doing. Um, and it looks like a leaf fell off. See, this one here has been going through a little bit of shock because, you know, shipped in all this heat. I may lose some. Hopefully I don't lose the whole thing, but here is another tea leaf. I don't know. Let me get up close so y'all can see. Come on. Come on. Straighten up. I don't know if you can see the jaggy little edges on it. But it has jagged little edges. It's a smooth looking leaf, but it has jaggy edges on it. But that's the large leaf large tea leaf so that way I can start doing my own black tea I hope but we're gonna see if it makes it through all the shock every little leaf it drops I'm keeping because I am I want to try my own tea Whew. yes it's it's pretty hot out here today's humidity level was like I'd say before I came out about an hour ago I checked and it was, the humidity made it feel like it was like 92, so it's not as bad as it has been. So this is the first chance I've had to really be out here and to get really anything done, anything worth time. Yes, brought my little fan. When I need a breeze, I've got one. Okay, so mix is done. So when the shade hits that area behind me then we are going to I'm gonna go ahead and spray for all those bugs hi Cassandra I'm glad you're here oh, the humidity is, is is crazy but it's okay I am ready to tackle the world today because I've got on my loose fitting full coverage clothing light colors just in case I get any ticks on me and I am ready to get some work done today till my back gives out that's the way it works so 
I don't normally like to do this, but today I had to go deep woods off. I hate mosquitoes. I hate mosquitoes more than ticks. Yeah, lovely, but prepared. This will help keep the mosquitoes off my back and off my shoulders. And the only thing, I sprayed my clothing and not really my skin because I don't like it all over me. I just I feel sticky and messed up. It's bad enough getting sweaty, but I did spray my arms and I put some up around here to keep the mosquitoes off my off my head. Because last week I'll tell you about that another day. There was some really funky stuff. Okay, so this will be this mixture will be sprayed after the shade cups. And now, now that we've mixed all these ingredients, I want my bacon to set in there and dissolve. Okay. Yes, mosquitoes. I call them pterodactyls around here. <laughs> all right, let's go. I got some things to share y'all. Hold on, let me, let me adjust the foot of this thing. All right. And readjust here, because I want to put y'all on the selfie mode here. All right. Sorry for any of the clicking. But I have to show y'all the good, the bad, and the ugly. And the ugly is ugly. When you see the damage that these beetles, these worms have done to the tops of all these Brussels sprouts. Well, the sprouts themselves look fine, but, you know, that's going to be the next thing they hit. All right, let me flip y'all around so y'all can see. I want y'all to see the damage. Whew. All right, here we go. One in for the close-up. Look at that damage. Now, let me show you what I found. Oh, my gosh. Where is it? Uh-oh. Here's another. Here's a harlequin. Look at that. These things are everywhere. Look at all the babies. These things are just tearing everything up. Look at them. Get out of here, Peppa. Peppers are doing wonderful. All of these over here are doing so much better since I trimmed all these leaves down. But the Brussels sprouts themselves are looking good. Let's see if we can get that to, there we go. They're coming out nice. But I need to treat all of this. And then after it bounces back a little bit, then I'll go ahead and let the tops grow some more. They, uh, they, they got my Brussels sprouts. That really ticks me off. I've already um, cut two of the butternut squash. They're sitting on my front porch. I forgot to bring those back out because I was going to show y'all. So those are now sitting out in the sun for a few days so they cure and harden. Well, hello, Lashes. Welcome to the chat in my live. I appreciate it. I got some comfrey in here that I need to chop and drop. And let's see, over here, oh yeah, the bell peppers are much happier since I trimmed a lot of this stuff back. Now they have more room to, to flourish. Um, yeah, these flowers have gone absolutely bonkers. They drop seeds everywhere. Don't care, I'll just let them regrow again next year. Um, now I have in here, do y'all remember when I made this box? Well, this gets really, really hot. So I tried doing the, the paper, shredded paper, um, for mulching, but I don't know about that. I'm just going to regular mulch it. Just, just not dropping. It's just letting too much moisture out. So paper's going to get covered up with mulch. But these are the Jerusalem artichokes and the purple sunchokes. Or is it the other way around? Anyways, we got Jerusalem artichokes and we got purple sunchokes. Look at you doing your job. Cute little butterfly. 
I'm not sure what type that is. I don't know if that's a bad one or not, but I do know that the white ones are bad. Um, as for sweet corn, yeah, I really screwed that up. So, a lot more nitrogen for the next batch. There's hardly any corn whatsoever in there. Got stalks. They're too short. Everything's too small. So, lack of nitrogen over here. Now, over here, we had too much nitrogen. And this, my squash plants went absolutely bonkers. Let's see. I just came out here yesterday and got like eight big yellow boy tomatoes, lemon boys. But I see there's one hanging right down there wasn't even yellow yesterday it shows how fast they change but look how tall it is tall <laughs> that lemon boy is crazy but I will be taking the the tops off of these um, in the fall before right before frost hits because I want to keep these growing and I'm gonna keep one growing or a couple of them in the in the sunroom my workspace so that way come spring i already have my tomatoes ready to be put in the ground of course they will come out here to the greenhouse and you know be hardened off a little bit before i do that but that's next year's projects um but yeah poor brussels sprouts but that's what happens when you neglect your garden and yes, I'm going to show up. You know me. I'm going to show it. I'm going to share it. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And right now, we're heading for ugly. And let's see. As soon as my live is done, we're going to be taking that fabric. And we're going to be dropping it down all through here. All of this here gets moved probably about four or five feet this direction. And then all of these are going to be eventually placed in the ground except for these. I can't wait. I'm gonna start uh, going ahead and taking off some of the tops of these, eating these, uh, taking these moringa leaves because I couldn't find any moringa tea in Walmart. That's okay. So I got two in this pot. I have another one here somewhere. What'd my husband do with it? Oh, oh, hey, hey, duh. This is right beside it. This one went through a little shock. But it's okay. It's got a new little top coming in. I don't know how well y'all can see that. Yeah, this needs a lot more fertilizer. It's looking kind of yellow. See if we can zoom in on that just a little bit. Yeah, got a little freeloader in there, but yeah, see the yellow leaves? Get out of there. Yeah, we're getting some uh, issues here. And here are my crazy growing Malabar spinach, as you can see down the bottom. I keep sand in, and that's how I got all my seeds to grow. I just let the, these go to seed and drop the seeds in, cover them with sand, and they regrow. So, all right, so that's all that. Now, let me take y'all up front. Oh, first, before we go anywhere else, we're going over here to the grapes because these grapes are starting to ripen. Look at the color. They're changing colors. I knew that they were gonna be darker than my other ones, but I just wasn't sure what type they are. They're pretty. And I did taste one. They're kind of a sweet, tartish kind of flavor. And I'm not getting any bugs so far, but I do want to protect those from birds. Okay. Now we're going to hit a little bit of a dead zone here, so let me flip back around. All right. And let me stand here with my banana trees.
They're beautiful, but I know in this location here in Zone 7B, I'm never going to get bananas. I'm fine with that unless I grow them in the house. But you saw how big those things are, and they're supposed to be muses. Okay. Oh, my poor rose bush. What are you saying there? Yeah, those those lemon boys are just they're badass. Let's just say it like it is. Okay. These are my rose hips. Look at the size of those things. Nice and big rose hips. But this whole thing got attacked by June bugs. The damage is, is crazy. Yeah, we got attacked. Get off of there. Look at those things. Aren't they beautiful, though? I think it's ready to pick that one. Ah, got it. Look at that. Yeah, once we go sit back down, I'm going to show y'all what they look like on the inside so that you'll understand why you shouldn't be eating the seeds from these. And to date, for years, I've still never successfully gotten these seeds to grow. So I'm thinking that this whole uh, type of rose bush, and I still don't know the name of it, I had to learn about this one. But I think it's called a Rudger rose. I'm not for sure, but it's got these big pink, uh, dark pink flowers. Very fragrant, beautiful, and the amount of thorns on this rose bush is crazy. Hi, learning to grow my own. How are you? Good to see you again. Saw you earlier. But yeah, just showing off this crazy rose bush. Let me show you the damage. Let me flip this around so y'all can see. Look at the damages here. But I have a new sprout coming up right there. A new piece coming up. That one I can uh, separate it and move it. That one's coming out of the ground, so that's coming off of a root, uh, the root system. But yeah, lots and lots of damage from the June bugs. Looks like I finally wiped them out with some neem oil. But yeah, I should have had two harvests from these this year, but it looks like I'm only going to get one because of the June bugs. And it should have been a lot more, but them things did so much damage. And if they get too much damage, or like this one here, look what they did. That one is a no-go. So now I can't even use that one. But yeah, looks like I'm getting very few off of this big rose bush this year. All right, now let's go over here. You wanna see insanity? This is a self-donated crazy cherry tomato. And I call it self-donated because it's just from the same plant as last year. It was one cutting that I divided into three, four, no, five, six pieces. It grew all winter long in the house. So I then I took it, cut the whole thing up into parts. Gave some to my friends, gave one to my daughter, and then some other ones just started growing by themselves. And there's just so many cherry tomatoes, we don't know what to do with them all. So now they're just dying on the vine, dropping on the ground, which are going to be voluntary again next year. So, let's see. I've been having a real hard time keeping all this going up front, especially... The cucumber these are the the bait alphas i like to try to keep these growing on their own up front away from all the other stuff so they don't cross pollinate but look in here all of this was chamomile and now we've got chamomile seeds everywhere none of this has done well I mean, it's like the tropics around here in the summer. I think sometimes we get hotter than, than Florida in the summer. But yeah, see, I mean, 
There's so many problems right here. Look at that nasty things. But yeah, I think there is a horned worm here somewhere. I see some eaten leaves. Yep. It's got to be one here somewhere. I'll have to find him. But that's all right. He can stay up here. He can stay up here. He can eat all that. I don't care. Because he'll stay away from my squash. But over here, I don't know, care what happens to these tomatoes. I've got so many in the freezer. I've got a lot to dehydrate and turn into powder. Because now these are really good. These cherry tomatoes are wonderful in two ways. You can either eat them in a salad. They, they're gross for making uh, sauce. Believe me, I know I've already tried. They're disgusting. I don't like that. And the other way to do it is to freeze them until you are ready to dehydrate them. Skins come right off. Doesn't matter. Skins go in anyways. And I take it all and I dehydrate them down. I turn them into powder. If they're still not dry enough, I'll put that powder back inside, inside of a coffee filter, back inside the dehydrator until it is so dry it is an actual powder. No longer sticky because they do get sticky. So, but yeah, that's that mess. Oh, let me rotate y'all back around now. Because I think we are done up here. Yeah, just a lot of crazy stuff this year. I mean, the weather's different. I've got branches laying everywhere. See this big tree here? That is a, supposed to be like a dwarf acorn. The squirrels love it. Or the crackle birds love it. But I don't. Because it's done grown faster than anything else. And now I'm going to have to have someone come out here and cut this tree down. At least by half. As you can see here, we've got like three trees in one and then right here behind me there's my blueberry bush one that's been here for years and then that little blueberry which has been years and really hasn't grown a lot and this cherry tree over here has been struggling for the past two years that's cherry tree and it's all because of that one behind me now, that's that problem. My husband used to complain about these all the time until I found out some stuff about them. Check them out. These are the Rose of Sharon. Also, they're a type of hibiscus. Rose of Sharon is an amazing, amazing, beautiful, Beautiful, beautiful flower. But it's a hedge for decorations and for food, believe it or not. So do yourself a favor and research the Rose of Sharon. They come in varieties of types of flowers. Um, this one is the double, and I'm trying to think, I have another one here. I think it's a single. I think this is a single. No, it ain't. I think they've all changed over. I had some other ones too. And these things grow like crazy. Don't matter how much you trim them down, they come right back. But they are beautiful. Yep, they are relative to the hibiscus. Very close to the same thing. But these are called the Rose of Sharon. Not much scent to them though. But they are wonderful. Let's see if you can get a nice little close up. Yeah, I love this. But yeah, I'll put those in, you know, dry them out with the tea and love to do my own natural teas. Yeah, I never did. I lost um, two of my figs. My blackberries are pretty much reaching the end of their growing season. Hey, just shifted some soil. How you doing? Grandma grows. Hi. Yeah, my blackberries are reaching their point of no return for the season. Oh, wait a minute. Booyah, got one. I 
there's several hanging around the edge here. Let's see if I can get us a big one. Oh yeah, here we go. Look at the size of that beast. That's a big one. Ants, again. Get out of here. Mmm, yummy. So now look. Free food, y'all. Free food. Because that's free food. Because it, it is what it is. That's free food. All right, let me go put these on the table because it looks like I'm going to pick a lot more of those blackberries. I didn't know I still had some. All right. But yeah, that, that's, that's a big one. Okay. One more thing I wanted to show you guys, ladies. Okay. Let me turn this around again. Sorry if I'm missing any questions in the chat. Come on, flip. There we go. Shade cloth. This has to go up this evening. I have no choice. This is a 10 foot by 20 foot. It's going straight across here because things are getting burned. Especially around the tomatoes, my melons. I mean, look at that. They're suffering. My little tigger melons are suffering. So... Shade cloth is going to get hooked to that piece of bamboo right there. And we're going to take it on down around through here so it doesn't get a lot of the evening sun because that's where the most damage comes in. Let's see. Let's check on this little one over here. Let's see what we got. It's that funny shaped one. <laughs> Look at that. It is shaped all weird. But it had uh, vines laying across it and all kinds of craziness. But yeah. Oh, look. It's little tendril. is dry. <gasps> Ooh, that means it's... Uh-oh. Get a beetle. That means probably tomorrow I can come out here and pick this one. It's starting to turn. Starting to turn yellow-orange yellow colors. All right. Let's see. How's the other one doing? Oops. Sorry about that. Just did the whole thing. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here it is. And there is, oops, get out of my way. There we go. There's my other one. Can y'all see it? There it is. It's a nice size one. Oh, hi, T Nug. How you doing? Welcome. Just how ironic I was looking at the screen at that very moment. Yeah, see, we've got some powdery mildew coming on the leaves. Yeah, this all has to be treated today, this evening. Yep. My little sugar baby is over here. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Camera just went berserkies on me. Whole tripod just went click, click. All right, let me try that again. There is a sugar baby melon right there. Yeah, that was an epic failure. All right. In between service, but you listen. And well, I'm still, I'm glad you're here. Yeah, look at all this crazy corn here. Time to pull them up and just let all these cobs dry naturally because I'm just going to reuse the seeds um, for next year because that's basically all I can do. Now look at look how tall that is. I'm just holding my arm out. There's the top of the tassel. That tells you just how tiny these things really are. Okay. What else was I going to show you? Now I don't even remember. My brain just went squirrel. See, that's why my nickname is squirrel. Oh. Okay, let's go over here. Now let's go over to my figs. We have a nice tall fig tree coming up now. I'd say it's uh, right at my hips. Hip height. 
And here we go with my little precious. We'll see how she holds up this winter out here in the uh, greenhouse. No, I still have not moved it. My Meyer lemon supposed to be hardy. We're going to find out, aren't we? Because it's going to be right out here in the greenhouse this winter. All right, and here we have my turmeric coming up. I'll let them grow together because for some reason they seem to be really good partners with each other. I have it done with the other plants, another citrus tree that's on the front porch. But yeah, my figs are looking pretty. Well, no figs yet because it's such a young tree, but... Yeah, look at them beautiful shiny leaves. All right, who else has just came up in here? Who else we got? Black's Tropical Homestead. Welcome. I'm glad y'all are all here today. It really makes me feel warm at heart. But yeah, um, I literally have comfrey growing everywhere so I can just chop and drop. You know, if I have a... Here are some results from a search. Uh-oh. Google's trying to listen. Stop listening, Google. Did y'all hear that? My phone's talking to me. They spying again. But anyway, everywhere that I have... And it's, all right, if I'm buffering for a minute, give me a moment. Apple trees are doing well. All right. Flip y'all back around. Are we still live? Yes, we are. Okay. Okay, I'm getting hot. I gotta step over here for a few minutes. Ooh. It is humid. Yeah, I finally got that bee problematic. Uh, that was an issue. I dealt with that. Um... It was a lot of ground bees and they had to go, but now we've got this hole in the ground and I'm going to use some um, insulation spray foam and I'm going to spray it down inside the hole. I'm filling it in. It's like, bye. Because I don't want no other bees thinking they can move into it. All right. So if I can put y'all back over here. Because now I wanted to show y'all. Oh, sorry about that. I ain't loosen this back up. All right, I wanted to show y'all the inside of this massive rose hip. Okay. Oh, give me a minute, I gotta cool off. It is hot. So I was on, um, so about 11 o'clock. Eco Neighbor and Gigi's Naturals were, you know, talking about, well, mainly Eco. He was talking about the, um, their land and the struggles of living off grid. And I'm like, I totally get it. I really do. I mean, being raised the way I was raised, I mean, hauling water was just a natural part of life for us. So, you know, gallon milk jugs, five gallon buckets. You know, always having to know where's the local station that has a water faucet to, to be able to get water. Or you find a natural spring, which we were lucky when we lived at this place we always called the farmhouse. Because it was literally an old farmhouse. It was like a, built in 1875 and it was a big old two-story. We had, the well was bad, so we had no well. Um, it was literally filled in with garbage. Made no sense. Um, there was a pig pens on one side, and there was on the other side, and we were literally just right out in the middle of nowhere. That's where we lived. No running water. We had bathrooms, but no running water. So needless to say, we had an outhouse. Um, most of the time, we had electricity. <laughs> that was debatable you know, if bills got paid. That's for another, another story. Okay. Rose hip. Looks like a cherry, don't it? All right, now let's open this puppy up. I want to show y'all why we don't eat the seeds to rose hips. Even regular small rose hips have these types of seeds. 
these seeds. I have never been successful at growing them, but they are not something you want to put in your body. All right, let's see. I gotta get one out. Let me show you. Let me do a close up. All right, let's see here. Come on. I'm just. There we go. Them seeds are hooked. Now, let me pull these off my finger so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. Oh, come here. They're hooked on the ends and you don't want that getting in your intestines. So when you're eating rose hips, please remember to remove your seeds from the inside. Now keep it in mind, this is from the large Rutgers, but the rest of them, and these get more hooked and fatter as these get more mature. So these are not something you want to eat. You only eat this wonderful part, the skin. Because I love these. These are so sweet, and they're sweet. They have a nice sweetness to them. A lot of seeds. But I'm just tossing these because they grow, they grow. But they're not going to. I've tried everything I could think of. Every type of stratification. I've tried uh, soils, sands. I've tried everything. And it's been like for about eight years. Never got a single one to grow. A rose hip is the rose bud, the, no not, not the bud, the pod after the rose has grown and you get these little red pods, those are rose hips. Superfood. It's a superfood. Good for you. If you don't know a lot about rose hips, I encourage you to go and look them up. Alright, let me clean this thing up a little bit more. Because I don't like all that stuff on the inside. There we go. Now we end up with this nice, delicious, sweet flesh. And that's the part you eat. This is the part you can eat raw. You can dr dry these out, dehydrate it, save them back for winter time. For when you can't get your hands on them, if you're lucky enough to find them you know most of them were really small on the average roses but you know just know what you're eating make sure like i said don't eat the seeds these seeds are not healthy the hooks can really do some serious intestinal damage but mm, yep oh another type of fruit so I just want to make sure that y'all saw that and that you knew not to eat those seeds in those rose hips. Or, you know, I don't know if the smaller ones actually have those because why did I ever have a need to go around hunting for the little ones? What is that? Oh. A cicada in the tree. Oh, yeah, I know, right? And I've made jelly out of them, too, when I've had so many. I didn't know what to do with them all. So, yeah. Yeah, T-Nug, I really did. I've made rose hip jelly. But we've got some wild roses around here, and I've been, I have been known to, to pick those and eat them. But I always spit out seeds. But, all right, let's see. Anybody have any questions? Just in case I missed anything. <laughs> yes, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, and tickle that notification bell, right? Oh, you're welcome. I'm, I'm glad that, you know, I helped somebody learn something. Because every time I go on someone else's channel, I'm learning something new. And when I learn something new, I'm going to share it. I'm going to let y'all know what I'm finding out. 
So, and every time, you know, I try to get on, I try to do what I need to do. I mean, phew, I don't know. But let's see what I can achieve with, uh, Yeah, the humidity's really climbing. I want to see what I can get done with this little thing. It was obviously going through heat shock from being chipped. But yeah, just for those who missed it, that's my little tea. The big leaf tea. It's going through some shock from being brought outside. And from, you know, not in the sun. And this one is my miracle berry. I have my own now. If they live, we'll see what happens. These are going to be in pots growing in my house for a while until they're big enough to survive. So, and then they'll be living in the greenhouse after that, but they'll get hardened off and get used to it. But yeah, this one just, I don't know. I've had it for two days now, and every single day one leaf falls off. And now we're at Two leaves today. Who knows if it's gonna survive? I mean, it's just so humid. But, but yeah, as soon as the sun goes back on down behind those trees, I've got to get out here and spray the mess out of my garden. It has been interesting. Uh, and gonna to continue to be interesting to learn to grow, uh, growing, as I always say, mentally, trying to grow physically, improving my own health, you know, working on the garden, working on me, and just trying to live my life to the best that I can. And practicing my preps, got my other new extra fire starters in the mail um, let's see I got the five and one that's what I was gonna bring out here to show you my new five and one uh, fire starter uh, survival piece it has the flint it has the rod a whistle a compass and some paracord so it's all in one like a survival gear and I got those for each vehicle and I'm gonna put some also in bug out bags and get all those things, you know, make for sure. I have a triple check. Always rotate your bug out bag. Make sure that you're keeping stuff in it that's appropriate for the weather at that time. Because that's your bag that gets you from point A to point B or even point C or D if you need to. Because sometimes your plans never go as planned. Always be prepared for the unexpected. And on that note, I'm going to go ahead and get off of here because I think I've talked enough, blabbed enough, and I've went squirrel enough. So, squirrel's going to say, peace out. I love y'all. Have many blessings to you all. And I will see y'all next Sunday. I'll see you in the YouTube streets. Mwah! Love you all. Take care.